What's up, hobby friends? Welcome back to Paint Break, the podcast where you can find a little bit of encouragement, discover new ways to make your hobby more fun, and most importantly, learn to paint bravely. All right, we got a pretty good episode today. We're gonna, we just got back from Adepticon 2024. It was a good time, and I know we both have a good amount to talk about from that, and uh, some videos we've been making, some other fun painting things, you know, all, all the things. But uh, Brent, what have you been up to since we got back? Oh, same old, same old. I'd say. <laughs> nah, I've been painting lizards. <laughs> I've been painting lizards, which is isn't same old. Yeah, yeah isn't too <laughs> off character. I don't think. <laughs> So mm-hmm. this time I've got the the crocodiles from Crocodile Games, and this was one of the few things that I actually bought at Adepticon. We got we got lots of little samples here and there, mm-hmm. but one of the things that I actually bought was a pack of Sebeki nippers, and the nippers <laughs> are what you call a young crocodile. They're just a little, just little guys. They just nip at you, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So I've got the nippers, and they're all running around with soup bowls because they're they're hanging around the stew pot. And there's one one big gator. He's got his apron on, and he's like mixing up a stew pot. And there's a little guy. Mm-hmm. His name is Niblet. This is the smallest croc is named Niblet, and he's standing next to the soup pot. And he's got his little little spoon. And um, yeah, it was time to paint some crocodiles. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's been keeping me busy, I'd say. Man, I I went pretty hard at the uh, Crocodile Games booth this year. Yeah, I ended up I I think with uh, well I I bought one of the rule books for the Egyptus game, which I hadn't had previously. I have the Olympus one. Mm-hmm. Um, I bought like a Hecate model that looks like Marathi, which we'll get into later. Um. And like probably fifteen other blisters of minis, and I did get that little little crock with the spoon. Yeah, they had so, uh, not not bad. The red tags were buy four for the price of three, right? Buy yeah. buy three get one free. Yeah, basically. So I I did that like three times. <laughs> and then you got yeah, a free I bought, I bought hungry a crock. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Free hungry crock for. You know, going through all the blisters and <laughs> buying a bunch of crap. Yeah. Um, mostly, I'm I'm hoping to paint them. I have now successfully painted one crocodile games miniature. Which one? And that that's it. That the Hecate model. Um, so I'm working on this video where I'm I'm like finally getting to my Marathi project. I painted the big one, uh, the GW one, and it looks cool. And I did not paint the smaller one because she, like, uh, transforms mid-game and you swap out the model. Mm -hmm. Cool, like, mechanic. Um, And I have the really old one that uh, Chris, who owns Crocodile Games, sculpted Mm -hmm. originally. And it actually says Marathi on the little um, standee tag. Cool. Which, I mean, it's supposed to. He said it is, but, I mean, people have said in the past, like, "That's, that's not Marathi, that's a dark elf sorceress or whatever it's like it might have been at one point when they're like no 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 we're changing we're doing different marathi or whatever but it still is and the hecate model is like really close to that model but sculpted 20 something years later yeah and it's just like a really refined nicer looking version that's obviously not exactly the same but very similar so i wanted to paint all of those up and so I finished. I, I, f- I finished it today. Yep. 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 That's yeah. that is cool to see. I I will be interested in taking a look at the Marathis through the ages there. But. Yeah, yeah. The only the only issue is that since he no longer works for Games Workshop, uh, some of the models have uh, less clothes on them to reflect the Greek goddess and god nature of things, and so I have to use. Blur lines or black bars? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> I filmed a lot of it, but I tried to like you know, not film it at the same time. So <laughs> put some tasteful blur in there. Yeah. yeah, 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 tasteful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not the one that you can basically see everything through it. But yeah, yeah we'll see. Yeah. I haven't figured that out yet. So this is a uh, Chris Fitzpatrick Fitz, and yeah, he he sculpted a lot of the dark elves for GW 20 years ago and mm-hmm. also some of the dark eldar 
including some famous sculpts. I think the As True Bale Vect uh, yeah. Pleasure Barge was was his work. <laughs> it in fact, was yeah. yes. Yeah. So, so very reminiscent of those models in particular. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so a lot of a lot of fierce dark Eldar and mm -hmm. dark elven ladies, uh, but also cute little crocodiles and also yes. um, some some yetis. Once I finish painting yeah, up my yeah. crocodiles, <laughs> I think the next time I'm at a convention and crocodile games is there, I think it'll be time for yetis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a good chance too that they'll be there. They seem to go to a lot of conventions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, the, I'm finally getting into crocodiles because the new Pro Acryl signature series from Rogue Hobbies is actually a lot of fun. So. Mm -hmm. Pro Acryl, you know, they put out their core line of paints and then they've been doing expansions like six bottles at a time. So they mm -hmm. they reach out to, to Vince or Ninjon or whatever and say, G give me six new colors. What 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 do we need? What what's not in the line yet? What what yeah, would, be, what would yeah. be useful to folks? What would be useful to you? And so a lot of those signature series are like, okay, here's the next six bottles of paint from Pro Acryl. And realistically, like depending on what you like to do at, at your painting desk, like two or three of the colors are ones that you'll actually use. Mm -hmm. But what I like about what Luis did, the, the Rogue Hobby signature series, is she just got like a color wheel. She just went yeah, bright, yeah. bright, vibrant colors around the color wheel and not, not perfectly centered on you know, the, mm -hmm. the three sort of primaries and the three sort of yeah, secondaries yeah. but so you know there's a there's a teal in there there's you know kind of a an indigo sort of color there's a there's a hot mm -hmm. pink but if you arrange the six in a color wheel it it's a pretty good color wheel anyway mm -hmm. they all kind of go together and all six of them are viable colors for lizards and so it was, it was just a <laughs> a good combination mm -hmm. and that's what i've been working on is just doing sweet color transitions on lizards, giving them different color scales, trying stuff out, mixing things. And it's been keeping me busy. I I mean, I can imagine. I think you ended up with, what, 25 of them? Something like that? No, I don't, I don't have that many. I, it was a lot. <laughs> no, I, I've only got like... <laughs> Count them up. I've only got eight, eight of the little crocs, but uh, before I even started Goober Town Hobbies, I bought some big crocs, so I... <laughs> oh, okay. I see how it is. I think it might be 18 total. Okay. It's okay. I was close. Just throwing it out there. That's a lot of Crocs. A lot of Crocs. A lot of Crocs. <laughs> well, good. I got a long way to catch up. I only have the one, so, you know. Just the hungry little yeah. fella. Yeah, he's yeah, he's, yeah. he's just a little guy. He looks super sad because he's holding up an empty bowl. He just want to... Mm -hmm. He needs soup, too, you know? Yeah, don't they all? The crocodiles love soup. <laughs> it is known, yeah. It is known. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually, uh, I really like those, uh, the expansion boxes, like from, from all the, the paint companies that do it. Um, I, I like it when it's like, oh, here's something specifically for skin. Yes. You know, for this color skin, this color yeah. skin, whatever. And it's a whole set of that. It's like six paints usually. Mm hmm um, I like that because I like when it works all together and it's like, oh, somebody sat down and went, well, I, this is a good base. This is a good mids, a good highlight, whatever these mix together. Yep. And like, it, it feels like the right way to do it, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's a little weird. Um, but I like those sets. They're good. And I'm glad that, that Monument is, is taking that and doing something cooler with it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the other new release around the same time was from uh, Flameon Miniatures, and mm -hmm. apparently it is six bottles of paint designed to do a sweet non-metallic metal gold effect. Yes, yes. Uh, but to me, it just looks like, oh, there's a couple of good browns <laughs> in there. Like, I'll use that <laughs> yeah. brown, and Mostly I'll use brown, that brown, some, and there's a dark yellow. brown. <laughs> <laughs> got a yellow, yeah. got, but, got but an ivory. But that's exactly the yeah. kind of set, right? It's, yeah, it's exactly. like here are the colors that you could just go pick out off your shelf, right? Any of these colors that are close enough will do the thing. But having an example of like, oh, well, here's what this non-metallic metal can look like with just these paints. And they've, they're pre-picked out, 
you know, the vibrancy and, and the, you know, the color and everything is all picked out for you. It's like, well, now I have less thinking to do. Like, I don't have to go, well, maybe my brown is too dark. Mm -hmm. You know, the bottom brown I have, or maybe the yellow I have is too white. You know what I mean? So like it, it does narrow your focus a little bit. Like his set in particular being just, this is non-metallic metal gold. Yep. It's like, well, good. That means I know that I can technically achieve the same look that he can, you know, from this box. Not necessarily fully, but, you know, something decent that actually makes sense. It takes away your excuses. Yeah. Like, yes. So you definitely yeah. have all the paints you need on your desk right here, right now. <laughs> exactly. Huh. They come in this box. You have nothing to complain about. You should just try yeah. it. Yeah. And, and it is, you know, part of a lesson kind of curated for you of like, yeah. here, mm-hmm. here's the stuff you need try this see what you can do and perhaps Mm -hmm. someday i'll get there but but for now for for now there's a nice you know a a green brown that i've been using on the bases of the crocs and Mm -hmm. there's a a, like a yellow brown that i've been using for the bowls (laughs) (laughs) they're they're soup bowls yeah 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 yeah. that makes sense nice clay bowl yeah Uh (laughs) and yeah you know even if you can't do non-metallic metal gold Still some mm-hmm. good browns in there. Still some good browns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. So the, the news from Adepticon is that, similar to last year, the line at the Monument Hobbies booth yeah. was very long and, like, mm-hmm. disrupting the entire aisle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just a line completely down an entire aisle. That's that's covering multiple booths. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, is that mostly i mean i think it's a good thing generally but is that mostly considered a bad thing like for people at conventions like if there's a big line in front of your booth are you are you upset is that a thing i don't know it depends if you're able to kind of pitch them well well you've got them right. held right there they they can't go anywhere they're not going to lose their spot right. in line you, you've like, got you've yeah. got them sitting there <laughs> yeah. i don't know it, like Come come over here, little boy. Do you like the Wendigo <laughs> do like or do this? you like the, yeah. the crocodiles? Yeah. <laughs> I want the Yetis. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'll sell you this pack of Yetis for 40 bucks. What do you say? Pack of Yetis for 40 bucks. Sounds pretty good. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know. It depends how proactive you are. If there's a, a big old pro acryl line just draped across your your vendor hall. Hey, see you're see you're in line for uh, some paints. Yeah. Well, uh, you, you know, you maybe maybe you need some minis for them yeah, paints. You got anything to paint with them paints? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Start start asking what sets they're looking for. Oh, non metallic metal, huh? Well check out this guy's in a big armor suit, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, I, I painted their soup bowls, you know, brown, but you could paint them. You could mm-hmm. paint them metal. I bet you could. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you get that like uh, what is it the the metal flake on the top, the Egyptian like inlay that kind of thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 that's not bad. <laughs> we're just we're obviously just getting the the pro acryl booth was nowhere near the the, the crocodile booth. Uh, no, no, it wasn't. <laughs> no, I can't remember. It, I can't. Maybe it should have been. <laughs> I can't remember who suffered the consequences for. For the pro acryl line. Uh, but, bombshell minis, I think, maybe, was maybe. right there. And then, oh, man, I'm, I'm forgetting. A couple other people. Yeah, um, yeah I don't know. So <laughs> I don't think I've done this this year yet, but last year, like a week after I got back from the convention, the mm-hmm. videos of people doing the like walkthrough of the vendor hall started popping yeah, up on yeah. YouTube. Mm-hmm. And I just sat there and watched like a 20 minute walkthrough of a place that no longer exists <laughs> that I was just yeah. at last week. <laughs> You're right. Like, oh, yeah. It's just like, I, uh, I was there. I, I remember there. that booth. <laughs> yeah. They had a good booth this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I did the same thing. I watched, I think, a couple of them. Like, I scrubbed through it mostly, but yeah, yeah it, it's a weird, weird thing. I don't know. It's It's funny because, like, I think I was more tired this year at the end of it than I have been the other couple of years. Like I was destroyed. Like we did a lot of walking. We did. Uh, I I we did, did calculate it. It was it was between six and ten miles a day of just walking, and a lot of that was standing. 
Fair. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, so it's like, it's almost like going to Disneyland yeah. and just walking around for like six days in a row. Yeah. It's kind of nuts. Um, yeah. So, so if you but, didn't go to the convention, if you're listening in and didn't go to the convention, you will have seen that all of social media for the past several weeks was just flooded with this one convention in America, yeah. in the Chicago area. And the reason for that is that it, 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 it is a big industry convention. It is, mm -hmm. uh, people are convening that like yes. a lot of people in the industry <laughs> are convening, <laughs> learning stuff, getting excited about the hobby again. Um, mm -hmm. sometimes releasing new products like the, the pro accrual line was because that was, a. Uh, like an early release of those new signature series boxes. That's, yeah, like that's by why the line three, was there. Three or four weeks or something. Yeah, early yeah. by a couple of weeks kind of thing. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, it's a, it's a time where people are getting excited and they're learning a lot about what's going on in the hobby for the next year. And so that's why we're talking about it. And that's also why mm -hmm. we were so busy and so tired. Like we... Mm -hmm. We got there Wednesday. Technically, the convention is like Thursday to Sunday. We got there mm -hmm. the day before, and we left the day after. And all six of those days, we were just as busy as we could possibly be. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, we had a hotel room in the convention hall, but we spent as much time as possible outside of the room, just walking yeah. around, hanging out with people, meeting folks. Somehow neither of us got con crud, which is pretty awesome and, that, and it's lucky. Nuts, actually. So if you were <laughs> yeah. one of the like hundred of people we hung out with uh, and you got sick, it wasn't from us. Like just to be Definitely, clear, yeah. not not from <laughs> <Yeah>. us. <laughs> not from us. <laughs> I got COVID last year and I know from who. I will not say. Yeah. Uh well, <laughs> we we know some of the people who got COVID last year. You know, we've got we've yeah. got guesses, but <laughs> I got a good guess. <laughs> Who did it? <laughs> Anyways, but um, yeah, we were, we were meeting a lot of people. We could have been been super spreaders, you know. But there's only so many yeah. times a day you can wash a hand, you know. Like it's, I was like actively trying to keep that in mind too, and like yeah. every chance I got, I was like hand sanitizer thing, mm -hmm, washing mm -hmm. my hands. Like I tried, I really did, uh, and it worked out. So that's cool. Good to know. Good that to works. know. Good to know. But. Yeah. Um, but yeah, being being so tired at the end, like coming back and then seeing those videos pop up, I was like, oh yeah, maybe I should just watch this to see it without also like being tired. Yeah. And it was like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> like I remember this. And now it's in like a weirdly different way. So it makes sense to like want to then go back and, and see that. You know, it's like, yeah, no, that's that's a big convention. There's a lot of people here. <laughs> like, it's a lot of stuff to see. A lot of stuff that I don't remember seeing. Right. You know? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Like, I, it it was a big convention. Like, I don't know if it was the biggest Adepticon ever, but it was definitely the biggest since COVID. Um, yeah. So the first time I went was two years ago. So this is our third time going. And it seems like it got bigger every year. At, but but it was packed. Mm. Like I, I heard something about eight thousand people, where it's normally like a convention yeah. for five thousand people. Like it, it was, it felt like that. Yeah, yeah, it was it was packed. It was busy, um, mostly in the good way. But yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it certainly wasn't like too overpacked that you couldn't still just walk around and look at stuff. But you know, there you were definitely having to skirt through like a middle section where booths on either side with people in front were kind of blocking you so you had to go through sometimes wait for the other person to be done going through and then you go through so it was definitely a lot of people um yeah it's pretty nuts yeah. i'm still tired man I, i'm <laughs> still tired oh. i caught back up on sleep and started painting lizards you just gotta, <laughs> you gotta keep rolling with the energy but rolling with no i i got home. oh my god i almost forgot my flight home was awful Oh, okay. I forgot. I literally, that's how tired I still am. No, like, okay. Okay. Here we Story go. Story time. Right. Story it time. Buckle silly. up, buckle up, friends. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Brent and, uh, Brent and Trent and I, Trent from Miscast, yep. we all Uber to the airport 
together. And there's another story involved in there that we will circle back around to that's very good. But after that, we part ways because, you know, we got to get to our flights, right? I get to my flight and it, the first one um, is delayed, right? For some reason, whatever. Then my um, flight gets changed to a new gate. So I have to run across the entire airport, like into wherever you were waiting, I think. All right. All right. And then they switched it again. And I had to go all the way back to like a different gate in the other terminal. Uh huh. And it's still delayed. And now it's delayed even more. Right. And there, there's obviously people were, were moving in this pack. Right. Yeah. Um, and then we get there and, uh, it ends up being that the plane that we have is broken. Right. And so it's delayed again. And they're like, we're, we're going to get you a new plane. You know, we're going to get you home. Maybe this will take a little, it's fine. It's not, not a big deal. End up going to like the terminal that's under construction and sitting in the terminal. And there's like a, 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 captain is there and he's the only one there and he's like okay so i just started my shift and uh turns out this plane is broken also they sent us to the wrong terminal including him um and he's like telling everybody this over the intercom (laughs) and he's like it could be like six hours they got to check this plane out and see if it's fit to fly because it's like every so often each plane has to go through like this six hour checkup process to make sure it's not going to crash right it's fine makes perfect sense but they sent us to a plane that was in the middle of that and a little bit lucky um we ended up like being able to have dinner whatever come back and he's like okay maybe three or four hours now we're not sure they're supposed to call me I don't know is this getting Um, to be like 10 o'clock at night at this point or oh yeah no I didn't I didn't uh leave until Something like that, like 10, 30, 10, 45, I okay, think. Okay, okay. Um, so then, like, randomly, he, he goes, oh, okay, um, actually, this plane is done now, and we're going to start boarding in, like, 45 minutes. Like, we're waiting for the rest of the flight crew. It's like, fine, okay. So we finally get on the plane, and I'm usually sat in the back because I like being in the back near the bathrooms in the aisle, whatever. Uh, it's just less of a hassle with people moving back and forth, weirdly. Um, and we start pulling out. Everybody's feeling good, right? And all of a sudden, as we're going towards the runway, <laughs> this woman and her husband get up and they start yelling. And like the 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 woman comes back and starts talking to one of the flight attendants about how this dude next to them is like drunk and he's grabbing at her and he's saying stuff. And the husband's like about ready to fight this guy and they have to calm them down. And they basically, I'm I'm hearing this because I'm right next to the area where they, they sit. Uh-huh. Right. And so they call to the captain and basically get the order that like, we're going to turn this plane around <laughs> We're going to go back to the terminal and we're going to get the police and they're going to remove him from this flight. But everybody be cool so we don't upset him. So they're having this conversation back here and I'm just like, oh my God, okay. (laughs) Or it's going to (laughs) be delayed even more. This is wonderful. Like, I don't have anybody waiting to pick me up on the other end of this, whatever. So, um, they take the long way around because they have to go through traffic now. And after another half an hour, we do a big circle and end up back at the same spot. And they, the captain opens the door and comes out and they open the side door and people come in and basically tell this guy, like, you are not flying on this plane. Like you need to leave. This is not an option. Like you have to get off. And, like, luckily the dude was, like, he was super drunk, but cooperative. Okay. Um, And he got off, and there wasn't, like, any more of an incident. But, like, come on, man. (laughs) Like, everybody's already super delayed. He had, like, a big gulp cup 
filled with some kind of hard alcohol that he had purchased at the airport. Wow, that sounds very yeah. expensive, but good on him. Yeah, no, he, he went for it. Um, so, yeah, they, they got him off the plane, and the people sat down, and there were no more incidents, but I didn't get home till like, 2.30 in the morning. Okay, this is this is Tuesday morning, and the convention ended Sunday night. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And we got to the airport at, like, what, five in the afternoon, four in the afternoon? Yeah. On Tuesday or Monday, yeah. Well, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing. If if the airline is gonna delay their flight by like four hours, that puts stress on people, and eventually someone's gonna snap or spend yeah. four hours drinking. <laughs> that's gonna... Yeah. Well, the, the captain came over the intercom again. And he's like, "Hey, look, like, I have to apologize because I knew that this dude may have been a problem, but like." Honestly, everybody obviously wants to get home. Yeah. And I kind of maybe figured he'd pass out and go to sleep or something and it wouldn't be an issue. Because, like, I saw the guy coming up behind the captain. He was trying to, like, talk his ear off for a good hour. Oh, okay. Probably being, yeah. So I think he was kind of, like, trying to control that. But then, obviously, he gets shut into the cockpit and nobody else knows what's going on, mm-hmm. theoretically, you know. So, yeah, man. Uh that sucks. Oh, that's two years in a row that I've been delayed by a good long amount of time <laughs> trying to get home. <laughs> yeah, last year you got it some, to spend some time in Houston, right? That's that's pretty good. I th- it was either Houston or Dallas. I don't, I literally don't know. <laughs> 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 For like eight hours, yeah. <laughs> but the convention is worth the hassle of travel. Yes. And it it's is. mostly Casey who has the unfortunate stories. So <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I, I got direct flights this year. I was so happy. <laughs> like this time it wasn't it's not like I had to stop somewhere. I didn't have to get to a gate and maybe miss my flight or anything. No. No, it just uh just happened to, to go this way. It was yeah, it was fun. Um Yeah. Also Caleb Wisenbach was on my flight. I didn't see him till way later. Yeah. But he was definitely on my flight. <laughs> so he had to go through that too. Oh, you guys can <laughs> reminisce the next time you see each other. Yeah, yeah. Hey, remember that drunk a hole on her flight? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Took it from a four hour delay to a six hour delay. Oh. Uh, remember that? After, like, yeah. After they, they trashed our plane and then gave us another trash plane and made us wait. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> Yeah, if you if that airline is gonna delay the flight by four hours, mm. like you can do a lot of drinking in four hours. Like that's, that's I the assume problem. that's really what what happened, right? Yeah, like maybe he'd already had a few, and then like he's like, oh, I'm gonna be here for a while. He's so on, on pace well, to like not? be feeling good by the time he gets to Reno, but uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, just getting started. Everything's still open when we got there. <laughs> Whoops! Except he did, he did not get there. Whoops! He was removed from that airplane. Yeah, well, boy, I hope he got home okay. It would, I, as far as I knew, and what I was hearing the flight attendant say is he's not going to be allowed to fly United ever again. <laughs> like he is now blacklisted from United flights. <laughs> Seems like a teachable moment for the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, oh yeah, okay. In Don't addition to airport booze being way too expensive, like it's. There are hidden costs yeah. as well. Yeah, hidden costs. If you can't yeah. handle your airport booze, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't get into a fight with your like, you know, passenger friends sitting in the chairs next to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a bad idea. Yeah. So that was fun. Well, was well. Good. Speaking of of bitter disappointments, um, mm. how was the how was the bit seller this year, Casey? <laughs> That's, that's that's a good segue. I like it. Um, you know, it was it wasn't great this year, honestly. Like we tried to get there pretty early. Um, yeah. So there's a bit seller that has a bunch of bits from tons of kits, few different games, mostly Games Workshop. Sells 24 hours the whole time. They have people selling these bits, and there's massive boxes as you go through. They're all basically labeled, and I mean, we went through a few. And I went through like all of the pre-painted stuff, which is usually what I'm after. And man, everything was either like picked clean, probably from last year, or 
super expensive. Yeah. Like really expensive for stuff that, I mean, I've seen and purchased for much less on eBay in sometimes better condition. Um, one model that I was even sort of interested in um, is the Trogoth Hag, which weirdly is also getting uh, a new kit, which I'm mm-hmm. kind of excited about. Um, I bought the Forge World one a couple years ago for like 30 bucks, I think, something like that. It wasn't super expensive. Um, it might have been like 70. I don't know. They wanted like 150 and it was like broken in half, like actually snapped at the legs, not like not glued. It was snapped off. So it was it was weird and disappointing. I didn't get anything, anything this year. And I was like genuinely looking forward to it this year. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah and in previous years, they have a lot of, they've had a lot of old metal models. Like you could get mm-hmm. pretty easily, you could get a, you know, a, a metal troll slayer dwarf for four yeah. bucks or something like that. Um, yeah. And you just have to dig to find all kinds of cool stuff. Last year, you got those metal goblins from the old chariot, goblin chariot kit. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. those were like a great start to a video that you did. Yeah. But, and they were like, what, like a buck? I, I think. I think six bucks for the pair. I think that's, that's what okay. I remember. Okay. But yeah, they were, they I were remember. totally worth it. Totally worth yeah. it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome models. Like $3 for a sweet model like that. Like I paid a lot more for models i just bought Mm -hmm. so yeah no it's definitely made sense in the past yeah but this year it just seemed like there was nothing interesting in the boxes a lot of just modern plastic sets in plastic bags like in sandwich Mm -hmm. bags at prices that were very close to msrp and yeah anyway oh well the the bits box is it's fun to to dig through all those kits and see if you could find any gold, but maybe somebody you know, else found all the gold this year. But we'll, we'll give I it mean, a try next year. It's always yeah. fun. There were a lot of people that showed up on Tuesday, mm. and I think they were already all set up because they didn't have to wait for like the convention hall to set up. So it's possible that there were enough people there that went through them and got whatever was potentially really good. Um, who knows? Yeah. I don't know. Speaking of uh, of selling out, the the Relic Blade booth sold out on the second day of the convention, like pretty early yeah. on Friday of the convention. Uh, oh, I heard it was Thursday night. Oh, it, it was pretty bare Thursday night. It was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so Sean and Relic Blade were doing good business, and this year mm-hmm. there was also organized play. There was like a narrative campaign that took up a good chunk of one day. There was a speed painting event. There were lots of demo games going on. Um, so it was really cool to see that, uh, yeah, people, people getting involved with relic blade and, and Sean Mm -hmm. has has built up a nice core of very dedicated volunteers. Um, yeah. One dude, one dude had a tattoo of, I think it was three, (laughs) Gilblins on his forearm yeah. like that that's awesome that's awesome that, yeah is, i know yeah. you got i know you got like your orc tattoo or whatever that's that's fine yeah but an Casey, orc tattoo but, is an orc tattoo yeah have it's you not, considered it's not a very niche niche game some with, that's a like a full half sleeve too it wasn't yeah. like a little tattoo this is like a wrist tattoo that says why on it this is an orc tattoo i have no no no. it's half sleeve yeah like it's dedication on a whole other level. Yeah, it was Apostles of the Deep, three Gilblins, like, just jumping out of a, an yeah. underwater <laughs> trench or whatever. It was sweet. Yeah, it's pretty rad. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that guy was helping run some de- games. <laughs> I would, yeah, probably. <laughs> He's practically in charge at this point. Sean's just like, you do whatever you want. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. I still, good I still haven't gotten really a tattoo, too. but... Now, Still, now, now I'm thinking. Would you? Now, I'm so oh, okay. Yeah. Now run me through this. Like you, you'd go like relic blade deep, or I don't know. It's just one of those ones. Like wow, I I respect that dedication. Like that's that's strong. <laughs> yeah. I do I do like Gilblins? You know. But yeah. Anyway, yeah. we'll uh, we'll we'll make Sean try to bring some some more relic blade for for next year and. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, I guess we'll try to hype up some of those other booths. Like, 
we we did enjoy our time at, at bombshell miniatures you know that's true that's very true yeah, yeah. got a little uh sweet looking little samurai mini mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah i think i think the time may come soon that i get around to painting my totally not mad max and totally not furiosa yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i think i think uh my favorite model that he has though is this little he's like tiny scale almost uh goblin that's holding the wrench looks really cool Ooh. yeah you gotta you gotta check that one out i will it's a good one i will yeah um what else Ooh, what, what i've got here what i've been holding this whole time <laughs> is a 3d print so we ran into our our buddy Ramon Yan from Ramon DTR. Uh, yeah. he's, a, he's a he's a Hollander from mm. the the Dutch, uh, I think. Um, anyway, <laughs> what I have here is a three D print, and he he does kind of production of minis. Um, yeah, production three D printing on expensive large scale three yes. D printers. Yes, exactly. And it. He does the type of printing where there's a layer of the minis, and then mm-hmm. it's it's almost like a like a skyscraper. Then he he prints like another layer of minis above the layer of minis, and then yeah. another layer, yeah. and then another layer. There's, you're you're there's, essentially stacking build plates and creating a new one yeah. to start a fresh batch. Yeah, there's yeah. there's floors to the thing, so you can walk mm-hmm. away for five hours and come back, and you've printed like four layers like full layers of, of yeah like uh, yeah. how many did he say was in that one was it was it like 200 and something yeah, i was 300 yeah uh, it was a lot 300 something. Yeah. yeah it was a lot of models in one yeah. print that you would normally do one model of at yeah. your on your home machine you know yeah so it so it looks a lot like what you can do with a home machine but it's really cool to see the level to which he has this dialed in and to which it mm-hmm. really can be production scale manufacturing and yeah just the the way that he's got the the supports and everything tuned like he can just go over to that stack of 300 minis grab one rip it off the supports cured minis too yeah fully it'll be fully cured the supports will all break off in the way that they're supposed to the Mm -hmm. mini will be unbroken it'll look amazing and anyway, the, the sample that I have here in my hand is just one of those examples of what 3D printing can do that none of the mold-based productions can do. So mm-hmm. this is a man sitting inside a cage. So it's it's like a, a cube. It's a cubicle cage. Mm-hmm. And so there's you know, six sides of bars to it. And then inside, there's a, there's a dude like just sitting in his cage. And... All of this printed, like there, there's no assembly to this. Like it's just yeah, it's just a single. Yeah, mm-hmm. if if this had been you know hard plastic or soft plastic or metal or whatever, it would be at yeah. least six pieces for the six sides of the cage, plus however many many pieces for the dude sitting inside. You'd have to clean up all the flash and everything, glue mm-hmm. it all together. This just came out perfect, and something new for this year. He had a similar model last year. But this mm-hmm. year, coming out of the printer, it has a working hinge. The yeah. front of the cage opens. Like you just, he just ripped it off the supports, cracked a couple of more supports that were, were holding the, the door closed. Mm-hmm. There's two working hinges so you can open and close the front of the, the cage. And there's even a little clip that I've used uh, about a dozen times without it breaking to like yeah. clip the cage shut again. And I'm like, Oh, I just did it again. Open, close, open, close. And this is a resin printer. Yeah. Yeah. And it feels yeah. relatively durable. I mean, he's, he's got things tuned in. And so mm-hmm. it's interesting to see people who are at, or at least near the forefront of what this technology can do, just putting it through its mm-hmm. paces and, showing off where this is going in the future it's really yeah. interesting to see yeah i mean it's it's really cool because they're definitely like it, as much as that technology is going to continue to get cheaper like there's going to be more people buying into these production level machines and being mm-hmm. able to do things that we've never seen before and we don't even really know what those things are at yeah. this point 
Yeah. Um, and I mean, to come off of a a build plate like that, just rip it off the, you know, the supports and be able to snap a hinge yeah. closed on a model, like that's that's pretty sweet. Yeah. 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 It really makes you think. And and that booth was pretty near to the Reaper booth this year. Mm -hmm. uh, Reaper mm -hmm. hadn't been at the last couple of, of Adepticons. But Reaper, for their Bones USA models, has been doing more and more production level 3D printing. So it's a real thing. Like, it's, it's mm -hmm. happening. The models look good. They're durable enough. They're, yeah. I mean, they're as durable as their PVC ones. And they, they look better. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad at all. I actually did get another bombshell miniature this year. The uh, Victoria miniature um, ah. that was being sold at the Reaper booth this year was sculpted by Patrick. old bombshell miniatures. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty pretty neat. I thought. I think so. We're like the last three, but I didn't know that until this year. So <laughs> live and learn. Live and exactly. learn. <laughs> All right. So, you know, we did a transition there earlier about things Casey was disappointed in, but yeah, another yeah. way we could have done that transition is <laughs> other stuff that happened at the airport. <laughs> other stuff that happened. At, well, I did say we were going to circle back. Yeah. So might as well go into <clears throat> other things you were doing at the convention that then yeah. became issues once we hit airport security. Yeah. So I brought I brought my glass slides to the air or sorry to the convention, and I brought my my Dexter boxes. I got these wooden boxes mm -hmm. that each hold fifty glass slides, and I yeah. brought I brought a total of a hundred glass slides with me, just blank glass slides, so I can get some. So suspicious. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird. So yeah, I've got my my Dexter boxes here. And I was doing the thing of getting samples of metallic paints spread across mm -hmm. these glass sample slides so that I can put them under my microscope and be like, oh, huge miniatures uses a lot of mica. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, scale 75, mica, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> um, and so I went to the like free paint area, or Fort Wapple, they call it, where mm -hmm. just people are sitting around painting minis. And they also have a lot of uh, paints have been donated by companies for, for you to use. And so mm -hmm. I got a bunch of samples from Citadel and I think Scale 75 and um, just from borrowing from other people, uh, Dark Star, Huge Miniatures, Reaper. And I got exactly 50 new glass slides of paints that I didn't have at home. And was able to take those home and look at them under the microscope and see mm -hmm. see what they were using. A um, lot, lot, lot of a lot of mica, but actually one of the interesting things is that uh, Citadel uses more aluminum for the the shiny flakes mm. in their paints than I thought. Even um, all of their I think all of their base paints are aluminum flakes, but that, actually that makes sense. Yeah, uh, a decent number of their layer paints were aluminum flakes also. Really? It was just that, uh, that's actually interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was just a, a couple of their golds that that mm -hmm. use the more translucent mica flakes. So, yeah, yeah, there's a couple of the golds that have pretty bad coverage that are for layering. They're like layering metallic paints, which is weird. I was actually curious about that. Yeah, yeah. So there's a couple of golds, Gehenna's gold, and I can't remember the other one, but the probably mm -hmm. the closest layer gold to Gehenna's gold was also mica. But anyway, where I'm going with this is I got stopped by TSA because I brought my stupid Dexter boxes <laughs> yeah, with me in my carry-on. <laughs> so it was so good. <laughs> so travel mostly worked out well for me because I got to go to the airport with my buddies, uh, Trent and Casey, and and they made it through security no problem. But the TSA agent, like my my bag, just got shunted <laughs> right to the different to the other yeah, lane. It did. <laughs> It's like it's not a yeah. conveyor, right? And then there's like a little actuator arm that pushes it through a window yeah. when it's suspicious. And it's like now you really can't get anywhere near it. They're like it's locked down in yeah. like a little box. <laughs> but actually the, the TSA lady 
you know, they bring you to like the window where you can stand behind the window and mm-hmm. be like watch them yeah you watch have to explain them yourself now yeah yeah the, the explain yourself window yeah you know. mm-hmm. and she actually let me inside the area where she was working to like mm-hmm. show her what it was <laughs> and it, it was the dexter boxes that shut uh, that mm-hmm. triggered the alarm or whatever like they just i have no idea what this is yeah and yeah close call because she tried to open the box oh, upside yeah. down and spill i was watching that too. yeah i was just like don't 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 flip the latch lady yeah, like yeah, you yeah. need to flip it around tell her tell her brett you were just standing there I'm like no uh, <laughs> so <laughs> apparently trent pulled out his phone and started filming this oh 100 yeah. percent. like before you even like you were on your way over there and he's like I, i'm getting my phone out <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yes, yes, get the whole thing. <laughs> I still haven't seen that footage, but yeah, I bet it's pretty stupid. It's it's pretty good. Anyway, they let me go. They uh, they released yeah, me. Yeah. yeah, makes sense. After explaining how like blood couldn't possibly be fifty different metallic colors, this is fine. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. I know you watch that show. This is fine. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, yeah, well, she I, she she started to pull like, doesn't it all just look the same? And I was like, well, y- yeah. Can I just go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just get curious now. <laughs> like, I, I don't I don't have time to explain miniatures, paints, yeah. mica, and aluminum to you right now. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, it'll be on the channel. Like, you go check it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. You can subscribe. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> you, did you hit her with that? You're like, well, no, look. no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. She she seemed like she was pretty deep into her shift, and but but she I let imagine, me go. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's good. I you know I can't imagine that that like in a backpack going through security. It's like you know it's this perfectly rectangular box made of wood. They don't know, but it's perfectly rectangular, and then segmented glass panels. Yeah, right. So in an X ray, that would look pretty suspicious. Well, it just looks unique. Like that, it was mostly yeah. like we. You know, they see all kinds of stuff all day long. It's just they didn't know what the heck to make of it. Yeah. 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 Um, so I can imagine needing to just be like, oh, we need to look yeah. at this yeah, but, potential issue. Yeah, but United decided not to let me have a carry-on. They just let me have one backpack. And so all of my stuff was crammed in there as tight as it possibly could be. And so, yes, yeah, something yeah. was going to set it off. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. But I got yeah. I got home no problems. I got man, I was home before you even boarded your flight. Exactly. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the thing. Like, because we ended up like parting ways, and yeah. my flight was technically earlier than yours. I think. I can't remember, but uh, man, it, it I, doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, you're the man who no longer flies United. Like he was still sober by the time <laughs> I got home. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh man. Anyway, okay, what what else? What else do we have for the good people? The the, the dear listeners. <laughs> uh one other thing that I picked up um at the Iowata booth mm. wasn't an airbrush. And I, I do need to to talk about this because it's too good not to talk about. So um Brett and I came away with a couple of samples of the New World's paint from i think it, it's yeah it's from iowata so Medea new world's paint yeah um so they're they're coming out or they are out i'm not 100 percent sure um just to test them right to see because these aren't normal acrylic paints they're like water-based acrylic urethane paints and it's like okay you know paint paints a lot of people coming out with paints but they specifically had two that we were interested in. Um, that is zenithal black and a zenithal white. And the idea is that they can go down like a primer and then you can zenithal with the white over the top, right? Um, sounds normal. But I actually tried the white uh, a couple days ago. And I'm pretty sure if I can repeat the results and this paint doesn't somehow degrade weirdly, uh, it is better than Liquitex white ink through the airbrush well now i gotta try it yeah yeah so it, it looks like it was basically super thin version of badger steinal res or mm-hmm. um, like pro acryl primer like it the the polyurethane paint like thin version mm-hmm. of those kinds of primers is, is my understanding <laughs> of what it is 
Um, but it is from Iwata slash Medea slash New Worlds. And mm-hmm. we, we were just talking to the, the guys at the Iwata booth, and they had a an airbrush set up to try practicing yeah, yeah. spraying the paint right there at the booth. And they had some stencils and stuff that we were playing with. And as we were hanging out with the booth, like three different like convention goers came and said hi to us, Casey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And eventually <laughs> the the guy running the Iwata booth like clued in that Mm-mm. people knew us that we had a podcast he clued, he clued <laughs> yeah. in that we had a podcast and uh yeah, yeah. and it was actually like yeah he's go go take a couple of bottles from the the rack mm-hmm. so we we do our thing we get our free samples at these conventions i put i put my uh white my zenithal white and my deep bruise purple in my toiletry mm-hmm. bag and tsa didn't notice that I'll tell you what. Yeah, I also didn't care. <laughs> I mean, this might be a crime, but I also got a bottle of Dirty Down Rust in my toiletry bag, and that says very flammable on the bottle. Yeah, so no, that's that, definitely that, that probably actually like, wasn't. They ask that you that question. Probably wasn't get chill. There. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, is anything in your bag flammable? And you go, no. <laughs> yeah. Who <laughs> we want to take a look at your paint sample uh, slides? So. Well, just to be clear, I figured that out after the flight. So. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but TSA were more worried about my Dexter boxes, so jo- I mean, jokes on them. Yeah, it, maybe that's maybe that's a like an airport security hack. Like, definitely get pulled aside and explain the slides, but put other things in that they just won't care about after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. never mind. Get through, kid. They get. <laughs> Just get through security. Oh, he's got more paint. <laughs> yeah, he's got paint next to his toothpaste. All right, get exactly. get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the ten thousandth person we've seen go through here with paint. Yeah. I think it's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, but I honestly, I'm I'm very surprised by this paint. Like, I mean, because I've I've used Badger. Mm-hmm. Like, I've used a bunch of different kinds of other white to do you know the same kind of thing, primers, whatever. But this just goes down ridiculously smooth. And I wasn't 100% expecting that. This is the same paint they sell in, like, craft stores. Like, they, they have their own section near the airbrushes. But, like, it, I mean, it's not the same paint. It's the same company that is formulating the paint and all gotcha. that stuff. So it's, like, rebranded, New Worlds. It's this whole thing. But it still kind of looks similar to the, the other ones. I think uh, Scott did a video on them a while back. Like, he found them in, you know, craft store and then did them. I, I didn't watch it. I have no idea what his thoughts were. But... Yeah, these are like the specific to miniature painting ones that they're now doing for their airbrushes. Um, And it just, I think it's interesting. It's one to watch for sure. Um, I did also try that purple. Same kind of thing, like really no spotting at all. And it it is very smooth, like translucent, smooth, like an ink, but less runny. Like an ink is runny. Yeah. Um, So much less of a chance for spider webbing. The, The white zenithal went down and it was like, I kind of want to just leave it like that it looked really good like as a model it's like maybe i shouldn't paint over this it just looks good i don't know well i want to give it a shot like i obviously i got yeah. the the white to try just doing you know zenithal prime and making some some nice smooth yeah. zenithals hopefully but the purple i got potentially to do kind of later in the paint job for the the anti-zenithal application of shadows right, exactly like just yeah, I shoot some for shoot some purple shadows in under underneath the model mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's exactly what i used it for um, it was looking good huh red cloak and some skin tone and yep. just came in from below and it was like yeah this looks pretty good yep like it's nice and smooth and subtle so yeah not bad at all um yeah well i i gotta tell you um Burt Mabers did not come away with any awards <laughs> at this competition. Uh, oh. Burt Mabers had a slightly above tabletop grade mini to to submit, but Burt Mabers had a lot of fun. Okay. That's it, the it important thing. Good. Yeah. 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 So that was that was my first ever miniature painting competition, and uh, good to have that under the belt. How about you, Casey? How'd you do? Um, honestly, I actually. I did way better than I thought I would have. Yes, you did. Um, So I ended up coming away with uh, the notable entry and a finalist pin for my Golden Demon entry. 
Yeah. Uh, I, w- I was I was pretty I was pretty happy about that. Uh, yeah, I really wasn't expecting much, but this year they had these cool plaques. Mm. They have they had these like uh, wicked brick like uh, acrylic plaques for for Adepticon. Um, so that you could like pin your pin into the little foamy backing board and put your card in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they, they gave these out with the finalist pins, and I thought that was really cool. So yeah, I don't know, like really, really happy about that. Um, yeah, congratulations, you should yeah. be. That was a that was a nice looking well, mini. Yeah. yeah, you did all right. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, man, it's just it was weird. Cause I was, I was just kind of like, I mean, there was a lot of, there was a lot of stuff in those cases Mm -hmm. this year. So yeah, even more so just kind of threw me. Um, but yeah, not not too bad at all. All right. So I I got a hot tip for people. You know, so the resin beast, you, there were four companies that you could enter minis from. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Creature Caster, Bestiarium Games, uh, Parabellum, or Eldritch Foundry joined in at the very end. And. Right, yeah. But nobody entered, and as far as I know, nobody entered an Eldritch Foundry mini. And so. I don't think you. Yeah, it was like. Because. I don't know. When, it, when I was reading the rules a week before the event because that's when I decided to participate. Like they had Eldritch Foundry listed in a few places, but like Mm -hmm. it hadn't made it all the way through the website yet. Like in on one of the pages of rules is like, yeah, you can use an Eldritch Foundry mini. And that was like the only place that said that my understanding Mm -hmm. is that nobody submitted an Eldritch Foundry mini. So there was a point during the award ceremony where they said, Mm -hmm. and the best Eldritch Foundry mini Right. Well, it wasn't one, could so they just been... picked their favorite. <laughs> like they, yeah. they picked could have been one person going so, away. Yeah. And now that means next year, that's the, you, you got to get in on the new companies because everybody knows mm-hmm. Bestiarium, Creature Caster, Parabellum. Maybe mm-hmm. the strategy is get in on one of those new companies. Check the, check the website three days before the event. Yeah. See if uh, something slipped in there. Be like Crocodile yeah, Games yeah. is a sponsor. Like, hold on a second. <laughs> uh, let me, uh, yeah, just bring an extra model just in case. You know, that's just a, Throw that's, that's a joke. I don't, I don't know, I don't know who the like I, yeah, I the, the I fifth know. company is going to be next year. You keep an eye out for it, though. That's strategy. Yeah. Speaking of Burt Mabers, uh oh. <laughs> so I don't know if you noticed, but in the Burt Mabers episode. Uh, some other people decided that Burt Mabers is is now on the level of like Chuck Norris facts, yeah. <laughs> and there there are quite a few. It's a good name. It's a good it name. Is. <laughs> like when when Burt Mabers paints eyes, they look into your soul. <laughs> yeah, when Burt Mabers highlights miniatures, he doesn't lighten the color. The miniatures brighten out of respect. <laughs> <laughs> so good. If this is your first time listening to Paint Brave the podcast. <laughs> yeah. I entered a painting competition under a pseudonym, and to complete the pseudonym, I dressed up in a stupid costume, and the stupid costume with a, a hood and a fake beard and glasses actually fooled uh, Peter Adams, the co-founder of Creature Caster, who was running admissions. And uh, so it worked. I did it. I, yeah. Yeah. I was able to successfully be anonymous in the competition, even though part of Peter's job was to change everybody's entry into a number. My entry number was 72, and, and that's actually all the judges saw, so... All of this was actually completely <laughs> that unnecessary. <laughs> oh, that's even better. Oh, well, no, I was glad better. to see. It's like, okay, good. They've got a. They've got like a really good system here. This, this mm-hmm. is great. Like, that's that's amazing. <laughs> I didn't. I don't need you know Peter telling anybody about. Uh, yeah. About Burt Mabers. <laughs> no, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> oh man, I just thought these were these were pretty funny, and there are a lot of them. And I think at some point probably need to just save them for when they come up again. Cause mm. 
At this point, they're going to have to. Burt Mabers is simply too fast for speed paints. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> that is pretty good. Now, there's the question of whether if I enter another competition, do I reuse Burt Mabers or do I have to come up with a new disguise? Because mm. now, now, now people know about Burt. You know, so switch it up to Mert Babers. <laughs> yep. I also yeah. somebody was was putting names in the comment section, like suggestions for future names. Oh, it okay, was like yeah. Ernie something. I, th I think it's the Bert and Ernie thing, but oh, that makes sense. But Ernie, like, just I didn't even make the connection at first. It's like, yeah, Ernie would be a solid name for a, yeah. a suitor to him. Like, off uh, later on, <laughs> I got the Bert and Ernie from Sesame Street. Okay, okay, like. It's yeah. actually less funny. I just think Ernie's a funny name. <laughs> Ernie is a funny name. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Bert, I mean, you, Ernie you Winston or something. Like... I can't remember what it was. <laughs> yeah, it was right. just like, yeah, yeah, that'll do. That'll do nicely. <laughs> that'll do. Yeah. <laughs> That's not bad at all. <laughs> There's a lot of lot of talent in our community. A lot of That's true. Hmm? That's very true. A lot of creativity. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I gotta start thinking thinking for next year too, you know. What you're gonna be doing an Eldritch Foundry miniature under the name Ernie something? Uh, Th those kobolds are coming out. That's true. That's okay. So yeah, <laughs> we learn all these new things at the convention. One of the things we learned is that in a couple of months, Eldritch Foundry, which is kind of an alternative to like Hero Forge or something like that, mm -hmm. but. Eldritch Foundry is coming out with the kobold race, so you can make custom kobold miniatures for yeah. your games or whatever you need them for. Whatever you need them for. Yeah, if you like need just, them to, just to enter a very them, serious yeah. painting competition. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> I could I totally see this happening right now. <laughs> Er, Ernie spends eleven months crafting <laughs> yes. a fine diorama of the uh, the Kobold Kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just print them all at like like half scale, even, and make to this fit like in absolutely huge, as many as like, I can. Village. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Like, that alone would just be impressive. Like forget forget painting it. It would just look great. <laughs> so in for this. Yeah, I it could happen. It could happen. Mm -hmm. We're we're gonna have to uh check back in with Eld with Eldritch Foundry in a few months, see how mm -hmm. they're see see what their take on the kobold race is. That's that's true. As we've discussed, yeah. there are different ways to kobold, so Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Our oh, our buddy uh, painterly Git gave us mm -hmm. some some kobolds. He did. Yeah, they're 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 prime too. They are prime. Know. They are prime. Yeah. We'll come around here somewhere. Yeah, I got them over over there. Mm -hmm. they're over there, they're over there. People like that kobold talk, and painterly oh, Git yeah. is a very generous Git. Always giving people candy and stickers, and we got kobolds because we have a special connection. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Well, I feel like there was something else we were going to bring up and it was important. Well, I I learned for the first time that one page rules is working with That's a lot of the other sculptors in the like yeah. STL sculpting realm to give yes. rule sets for other sculptors. Mm -hmm. And that is really cool to see like I can't re even remember the complete list of other like STL designers, but uh, well, like Titan Forge was one of them. Yeah, and that's already huge. E even if they just yeah. said, "Hey, Titan Forge is now OPR compatible," that would be huge. Yeah, I I don't know how under the cover that was, but uh, it's out there now. <laughs> I I feel like that's something that was like going to come into effect in the next couple of months, but they were definitely telling people about it at the convention. But what I mean, yeah. I feel like yeah. it's not like he was being hush hush about it. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I definitely saw the the boss of Titan Forge and the boss of One Page Rules walking around together at the convention. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah. Yeah. People could We're figure just it out. We're inferring from that exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But either way, like the idea that one page rules could have like, uh, you know, 
a war scroll, whatever you want to call it, for like a model in a different range that mm-hmm. could just slot into an army just because you like that model. Yeah. Is kind of amazing. Like that, That's that so really good. means that you can do anything with all these things. It, it, it's like a home for whatever model that you want. Yeah. It could just have rules that make sense that have something written up about them that aren't just like you made them up at home. These are like official. Yeah. Actual from their stuff. Yeah. So, so I don't know if we said it clearly, but the idea is if you Probably have not. an army that you printed and painted from Titan Forge is one example, but all of those models will have official rules from one page rules for yeah. those game systems. So it makes one page rules more uh, broadly usable. It gives more value to the miniatures that you get from some of these other STL designers. Mm-hmm. I think it's a really cool collaboration, and I'm I'm very excited about it. Like that's yeah. That's well, great. honestly, that it will make me look into other companies if they're yeah. on this list of like, hey, our stuff is is compatible. We have rules, and they're they're ready to go. Mm-hmm. Like, I will actually genuinely look into that even more because. Like, I'm interested in one-page rules, and I support them on Patreon, and mm-hmm. I get their monthly stuff, and I have printed a lot of their models. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, there's genuine interest in, in doing that. And I have Titan Forge, but I haven't printed very many of their models because I don't know much about Blood Fields, even though I kind of want to play that. Yep. But there isn't enough there that I see month to month that's wanting me to jump into that, whereas one page rules definitely is. Yep. Um, so the fact that those models could now possibly be something I could play in this game or even like, oh, I like this dwarf from uh, this other company and now it's got its own rule set here and he's a named character or something, but it fits in with my army. Like, that's really cool. Yeah, I and like I that a lot. Look at other companies that then are on that list. You know, much more interest. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Okay, I think that's I think that's what we learned from Adepticon. That's a pretty good. We learned some things. We did. We learned. I I learned that I should probably buy some new shoes like a month before. Oh yes. Yeah. Were yours too new or too old this time? Oh, definitely too old. I, okay. I had the same pair of shoes from last Adepticon. Yeah, that's a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. It was a yeah, you get some cross trainers and break them in before you go. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Get them like a month before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walk around. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I did want to mention from uh, Knuckle Duster Miniatures, Gunfighter's Ball is the game. The only other models that I purchased was this set from the Blazing Pistols Faction. And they are finely cast metal blazing saddles miniatures. Mm-hmm. Brent has no idea what that is. And I've actually never seen the movie. On its own. I've never seen the movie. Mm. Yeah. Never I shame. I'm like a regular Scott the miniature maniac over here without my yeah. That that's up there, actually, with some of that stuff that he like hasn't seen. Yeah, but I, I've seen all of the things that he hasn't seen except for this one thing. Yeah. This one thing trumps all of those things. Yeah, but he also hasn't seen this movie. Like, there's no no doubt in my mind. Like, no, <laughs> no. I Okay, I don't know. I kind of feel like Type in the him. comments whether you think Scott the Miniature Maniac <laughs> has seen Blazing Saddles. I mean, out of out of all the movies that that dude has not seen, this cannot be one of those movies. Like, Well, we say that about every single one. <clears throat> yeah. That's true. <laughs> okay. I think that I, about I does it for this time, Casey. <laughs> I'm just saying, you need to go. I don't care what you're doing right now. I don't care how late it is. You just need to go find Blazing Saddles. Mm-hmm. I don't care. Anyways, thank you again for joining us on another episode of Paint Bravely. If you enjoyed this podcast, please help us out by leaving us a review on iTunes, subscribing to the YouTube channel, and sharing this message with your hobby friends. And as always, we appreciate each and every one of you for listening, and we will talk to you next time. Talk to you next time.